Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to continue where we left off uh, with our F-16 uh, Zero to Ace and uh, doing a little bit of taxiing work as well as uh, taking ourselves over to the main runway and taking off, doing a little bit of navigation and then uh, putting this thing down on the ground. So this F-16 of course has got all the most latest and greatest little doodvickies and gadgets as far as communication goes. We basically have two different systems. We have our upfront system and then we have our backup system that we have down here. It's uh, worth noting that the upfront system uh, works absolutely wonderfully great and everything along those lines if we want to use either of these buttons. So for example, let's uh, say we want to call for taxi here. I'll click on call there, and I can see that the frequency is 251.000. So all I'd have to do is press on COM1, use the little dobbler switch to either go to the preset, which I didn't set up, or come to this number and simply type in the number that we're interested in. Press the enter key, and now you can see we're on 251.00. So now if I press the UHF transmit button, I should be able to call up to air traffic control and then ask them for a quick startup, ask them for a taxi, everything along those lines. Success. Now we're going to request taxi because we already got started. Request taxi to runway. Taxi 2, uh, runway 9. All right, let's see if we can figure out what that's going to look like. So runway 9 is an east-facing runway. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come out here, take a left, go all the way down. That's kind of a bummer, but uh, don't worry. We got the fast-forward button. So to get this thing rolling on the ground, super-duper simple. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna come down here. I'm going to kill my parking brake. It's going to give you a big angry message. And then I'm going to press the nose wheel steering button. So you'll notice this ARNWS popped up here, by the way, if you need to change the brightness of this, that's what that little handle is for. If you do not activate your nose wheel steering, you can't steer on the ground. It's worth noting at this point, if I come in here real quick in my controls, the nose wheel steering button is the S key, for those of you who are not using a fancy ridiculous controller. So we're just going to give it just a teeny bit of gas, and then we're going to pull the throttle back. <laughs> it takes absolutely nothing. Now, the danger with this particular aircraft in taxiing is the possibility of rolling the aircraft on its side. When you start going, and I'll go a little bit fast here just to demonstrate how easy it is to accidentally basically flop this aircraft over. So you want to be very, very careful with it. I'm going to sneak up here and make sure you've got those uh, brakes bound. I'm just going to get a little bit dangerously far. I'm going to rail on it. See how the whole airplane tilted a little bit? If you do that with a little bit more speed, you're going to find yourself basically grinding the side of the airplane and potentially blowing your airplane up and ending your flight long before you actually get to the point where you're going to be safely flying it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, zip down here. We're going to take our first right. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Again, if you start feeling a tip, reduce the steer and go ahead and uh, hit those brakes. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself in a bad shape. So what happens when you hit a situation like this? We have a long, long taxiway. So what I like to do is I like to center the aircraft as precisely as I can, which again, for me, that's not going to be terribly precise, and then shut off the nose wheel steering. And now that you've done this, if you bang on the uh, nose wheel steering all you want, notice nothing happens with this particular aircraft. You only get these little tiny kind of bumps back and forth. Uh, we'll see at the end of the runway. There we go. Just about to the end of the runway now. We'll go ahead and I'll tap the nose wheel steering. Gently come around the corner here. And we'll continue on our little flight here. It took uh, quite a while to actually get this thing all the way down. That's perfectly fine. All right, center ourselves up at the end of the runway here. Again, slightly different style runway, but it's going to work well for us. So this aircraft, because of its design, has a spectacularly powerful engine for something its size. Obviously, we're not carrying anything, so we're basically in our air show configuration here, which means that we can basically get airborne and half throttle without too, too much effort. Go ahead and hold it short of the runway here. Go ahead and call up air traffic control. Ask them for a takeoff. Good time, of course, to run your last second checks. We're going to flip on our landing light, make sure that's looking pretty good. Check, 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 check. Over again, make sure everything looks good, everything looks good, everything looks good. Check, 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 check. All right, let's roll. Okay, so now this aircraft is equipped with an afterburner. What an afterburner is, is it's basically a device that injects fuel directly into the exhaust of our jet engine. Uh, when you do this, you get a huge boost of thrust at a massive cost of fuel consumption. So I'm going to line myself up the runway carefully. I'm going to disable my nose wheel steering. We'll go ahead and park here. So on the F-16, your throttle has a couple different zones in it. So if you actually take a look, I'm going to gently push the throttle forward. You see how it catches right there? That is the edge of your military power. So if I push past that point, that's going to kick on my afterburner. So I'm going to go ahead and back it up a little bit here. Whoa. 
<laughs> this is why you want to look out the window when you're uh, navigating on the ground here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick it all the way up to military thrust, and then I'm going to go ahead and pop it into the afterburner so you can see the performance. The speed we're looking for with no weight on this thing is going to be about 140. Now this aircraft is a fly-by-wire, so if you notice if I whip my control around maximum deflection, it really doesn't move the controller that far. It's basically pressure sensitive for our purposes. All right, so I'm going to push all the way forward to the top of military. The aircraft is going to crouch. We're going to start rolling forward here. Notice no angry flames are coming out the back. Now I'm going to push past that point. And the afterburner kicks in. It's 120, 130, 140, 150. All right, let's pull the nose up. We're airborne, get the landing gear up as fast as you possibly can. Hold the nose up at a pretty steep angle because you don't want to get past 250 until the wheels are completely off. And we are safe. <laughs> Once you got a little bit of altitude under you, go ahead and pop yourself out of burner. Now keep in mind, we did not need to use the afterburner for that takeoff. It is just incredibly fun to play with. <laughs> All right, sweet. Now we're airborne. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how we navigate this thing. So this aircraft is fly-by-wire, so if I push the nose and leave it let go, it stays there. I'm not touching my controls at all. It does not do that in roll, however. So if I have an unbalanced load, for example, all the weight's going to come down on one side. On the left side, we have our airspeed. You can see this is indicated airspeed. If you want to see actual airspeed, you can actually come down here and set that. Personally, I'm an indicated airspeed kind of a guy, because that's going to be a little more helpful in a dogfight. And I'm going to go ahead and hold it at 450, because we're going fast enough. Over here on the right-hand side, you've got your device that's going to be telling you your altitude right now. We're at 4,600 feet. Right our altitude's down here. Here is our heading. And see this little thing right here? This guy's called the tadpole. What that's going to do is it's going to tell us where we need to be pointing in order to get where we need to go. So in this case, this is our aircraft. This is where we need it. So all we're going to try to do is gently roll the aircraft to get the tadpole to absolutely agree with what our current flight path vector actually is. So I'm going to go ahead and take a nice gentle turn here. Again, you're looking at this going, this isn't a gentle turn. Uh, no, it's not, but it works fine for us. Notice how uh, we've already got 7,000 feet underneath us that quickly. This is an amazingly high performance aircraft. I usually tell people work with something a little bit lighter and a, li a little bit um, more difficult on the controls before moving on to something like this. This really is a lot of airplane. Passing through a little cloud here. Yeah, we're pulling pretty steep here, but we have no weight on this aircraft at all. Delightful. And if you take a look directly ahead of us, there's this little diamond kind of chilling in the sky. I'm pointing my little crosshair right at it. That is technically our waypoint that we're trying to get to, and it's about 36,000 feet above us. So we're just going to basically uh, continue to climb. We're going to keep our flight path vector right on the center of that little guy right there. So now we can go ahead and take a look at some of the other functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to activate the automatic pilot. You have a couple different modes. You have heading select, steering select, altitude hold, attitude hold. So I'm going to left click to put it down to steering select mode, which says go to the current steer point. I'm going to push it down to attitude hold. It's going to hold us at this constant attitude of about, let's call it six degrees or so. We're just going to continue upwards. So now let's take a look at a couple of our different systems here. So right here, we have basically a little dedicated kind of front control right here. What we can do now is we can actually change what steer point we're selected. Now, lucky for us, if you actually take a look at my little um, graph down here, you can see that the currently selected steer point is the one that's got the little crosshair on it. Now, if I wanted to, I can zoom out by pressing this one. I can also zoom in by pressing this one. You can see we're pointing right at it which makes sense. Other information we get, if we look up in the heads-up display, is we have our altitude low limit. We have the distance to our current slightly selected waypoint. We have our time to that currently selected waypoint. And of course, so we have everything else, you know, what our cross track and everything like that is. Uh, one thing I will do real quickly is uh, before I make myself insane, I'm just gonna click this button to transmit link 16. This is just providing data link to everybody. Don't panic too much. Now that that's been taken care of, uh, let's go look between our legs real quick. Now you'll notice that this is basically an HSI. Is. And the thing that's so cool about it is this actually duplicates all the information we're seeing up on the front screen. Which means if I were to say come in here with my little course selector and actually adjust it, <laughs> you can actually manually fly this without having any of this funky stuff uh, in front of your display at all. And again, you can do it any which way, but we'll take a look at this uh, when we go into a little more navigation. So we're going to continue climbing up here. I've got about 14,000 feet. Ideally, when you climb this aircraft, you want to be climbing at about 0.78 on the Mach meter here. Uh, you can go a little bit quicker than that if you want to. If you go slower than that, you tend to get a much, much more high drag situation. I'm going to go ahead and bring ourselves up to, let's call about 15,000 feet, and we'll take a look at some of the basic handling of the F-16. 20, 760, 800. Looks pretty darn good right there. Let the nose come down. And that will hold it pretty nicely. So now we're just going to kind of play a little bit with our throttle to get ourselves going at a comfortable. Like I said, anywhere between 0.78 and 0.82 is usually going to be your general cruise speed in this aircraft. 
it's completely dependent, of course, on what your mission is, how much junk you got hanging off the wings and everything like that. But I find that to be a relatively comfortable cruise for it, where you're not going to be burning too much gas. Speaking of gas, right here is going to tell you exactly how much gas you're burning right now. It's an hour per hour. And down here is going to tell you how much gas you have on board, fuel, pounds. So you can see we have about 6,050. Uh, 6, and you can see we're burning 4,800, which means right this second, if we were to uh, do some extremely quick division, we discovered the fact that we have about an hour and 20 minutes worth of fuel on board, which is very typical. Again, we, we're an F-16, we're a little teeny tiny scooter compared to something like an F-15. Okay, so our uh, next video, what we'll do is we'll go into a little bit more detail as far as a navigation on this one. We'll take a look at some of the tricky stuff like ILS as well as TACAN, and of course, we'll put this thing down on the ground. Enjoy.